Isn't God good? All the time. God is good. Let's everybody stand up. Let's go forward in prayer. Welcome to the homecoming. God is so awesome. We, we thank Him for all He does for us. Betty, Father, we thank you for this day, this chance to be in your house, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister life to us, to us, Father. Minister to us, to us, Father, in a very powerful way. And we thank you, God, for what you're going to do this day. We thank you for those that came, Lord, and I ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 God is so, so awesome. Y'all ready to, y'all ready to, do, ready to do, get started? <laughs> we do this every Sunday morning. For those that don't know, we do this every Sunday morning. And, and it's very powerful, especially now with all that's going on in the world. Don't be afraid of what's happening in the world because Jesus said it was coming. And it's coming just like he said. And so, God, so we know that God's got this. He already told us thousands of years ago that this was going to happen. So we know that he's got everything under control. Remember, y'all say this to me. Spiritual warfare is 10% Satan's tactics, 90% how they respond. Remember, with God, we are not helpless. We're not hopeless, but we are powerful. Give the Lord a hand clap. So and I'll say this to me too. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, O oh Lord. Amen, amen. You can be seated for a minute. You can be seated for just a minute. Okay, but it's, 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 it's All right. So, we remember, we are also going on in the Middle East. We knew that this was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. And the time is now. And so there's confederations and federations all getting, getting lined up to, to attack Israel. And, and we know about that bloody, bloody, bloody attack, unprovoked attack that was on them. And so uh, we need to be praying for them and all the innocent people on both sides that have been hurt. Amen. On both yeah. sides. Yeah. They've been praying for these people and trusting that God's got his hand on this. Amen. And so the way we're going to pray for Israel is I'm going to help you. Psalm 20, here's our prayer for Israel. So let's say this together, okay? Go look up there and say it with me. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. Salah. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy for our salvation in the name of our God and set up on matters. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving light of his right hand. So trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of our God. They collapse and fall. We will rise and stand upright. O oh Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Somebody say amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm so glad you're here. Now it's time we're going to stand up and we're going to sing a little bit. Y'all ready to sing a little bit? God's got this. Somebody say, God's got this. Y'all ready? Oops, let me turn. I'm on the world now.
pillows one time and it hurt my hand. All right. Here we go. Ready? We're going to sing this without any music. Ready? Ready? Jesus. Jesus. Come on, worship. Jesus. There's just something about that. The guy was on the side of the room hitchhiking on a very dark night and in the middle of the storm. The night was drawing on and no car went by. The storm was so strong that he could hardly see a few feet ahead of him. Suddenly, he saw a car coming toward him in his house. Without thinking about it, the guy got to the back seat, closing the door, and he realized that there was no body behind the steering wheel. The car starts slowly. The guy, uh, the guy looks at the road and sees a curl coming his way. Scared, he starts to pray and begging God for his life. He wasn't come out of, he hasn't even come out of shock. And then just before he hits the curve, a hand appears in the window. And it loses the wheel. The guy paralyzed in terror. Watch how the hand appears every time, right before a curve. Gathering his strength, the guy jumps out of the car and lives in the nearest town. With his shock, he goes to a restaurant and starts telling everybody about this horrible experience he went through. A silence uh, enveloped everyone when they realized that God was serious. About a half an hour later, two guys walk into the same restaurant. They look around the table for one to do sad, and one said to another, Look, John, that's that dummy who got in the car while we were pushing him. <laughs> I know, Mark, here's a buzz. I sound like her, too. God is so good. All the time. All the time. That's right. I want to welcome you to our 107th. 107th. The church is older than that. There's a, there's a history. Once you see that, I'm going to tell you about the history. You got your history. I'm not going to read all the history. Read all the seats. But, but this is the 107th celebrated every Christian church homecoming. Okay? Now, the history of the church is going to be uh, in your bulletin. And so you can look at the history. Just pull it up and you see the history of this church. And also, there's a memory candle here. This memory candle is there. For all those of us that have, that have gone on to be with the Lord, their names are listed on the back of the book. So all those that are interested, there you go. And also, I want to thank y'all for coming. I also want to give a big thanks to his rescue team here. Stand up. There. Talk to us. You get a lot. You get a lot. I'm going to You'd run, honey, but you can't. 
Amen. Yeah, well, they're, they're doing a good job in the church. The church uh, supports them. They're doing a tremendous, tremendous work. And their work's not always easy because I've been in this training. He gets his people out there, and, and I think he picks the worst night, the coldest, wettest night to do this. And he gets them to bring out their own saran wrap on all the tarp. And they have to build a fire. Part of their qualification is to build a fire. They have to eat out there in the middle of the woods, and then they have to wrap up in that tarp uh, and spend the night. And then you get back up in the morning and start searching again. And he usually has somebody hid, and they go to find him. So they're just hitting, just hitting uh, candy stripe stuff. This is the real deal. But that's what you need if you've got a child missing or an open person missing or something going on. These are guys that are calling. They're on the sheriff's, not the sheriff's list. These are guys that get called, and they're absolutely awesome. Now, now unless you have not watched the news lately, my like, God. Oh, Unless you have been hiding under a rock. If you haven't paid attention to life at all, the last three weeks has been turbulent. It doesn't back down, it keeps growing. Just yesterday, now there, there's five warships, the United States warships are around in the Gulf up there and or the sea, and, and uh, the, the United States Navy has been shooting down missiles that have been named in Israel. Tomahawk missiles and cruise missiles, they're all in that way. I mean, they've been shooting them down. And they're, they're, there's just all kinds of stuff going on. I out that Russia and China are, are, are planning on getting in it one way or the other. Uh, supposedly, peacefully, but we know how that works. And, and Iran, and you got, you got all this stuff going on. But the Bible says, and I say, or in Ezekiel 38 and 39, that before the rapture takes place, this is going to happen. And it's going to be a very powerful thing. It's going to be a federation of nations. And, and Russia and Iran and China, all this is going to be there. They're going to go to attack Israel. But, but, but take part of it, because the Bible says, we're going to get carried away. And some of y'all don't know the end of it. But if you just say this, look, Ukraine's under attack from Russia. Taiwan is possibly going to be attacked by China. Israel is under attack by Hamas and Hezbollah. That's why I've got in it now. They're in Lebanon. And they are firing missiles over the border. So now they're involved heavily in this. And the anti-Stalinism is at a boiling point worldwide. Even in, even in the United States, there there is students and there's people marching and protesting and they're saying things that this sad. Well, some of them are talking about just stop stop the fighting. But that that's that's one thing. But some are saying uh, uh, pride the Jews or gas the Jews or Hitler was right. Now now. This is crazy news. But the Bible said that they would be hated of all nations. Okay, so I'm gonna take it a little bit further and maybe hopefully this gives you a little bit of hope and peace in all this. And so now, again, from the times you got the Israeli flag, you, you, you got uh, the Ukraine flag, and you got our flag all intertwined together. So uh, let's just look at what the Bible says. The Bible says in Luke 21, and I feel that we're not gonna be doing a lesson on this day per se, but I'm going to get started with this. But, but when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. But he says, must have come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Though he, uh, then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs in heaven. Let's just, let's just break this down a little bit. There's going to be wars and commotions. The word commotions means instability. It means a state of disorder. How many of you all this instability in the Middle East, even instability in the United States? No. Man. The whole world is marked by instability. So, so in times, you're going to hear there's going to be wars, and there's going to be instability happening. And it says when you see these things, do not be terrorized or ter terrified. That word terrified means to be terrorized. What is the boss? What is Hezbollah? What is our man trying to do to terrorize us? I see people now, their nerves are so shot. I'm not here. Their nerves are so shot that they can hardly even operate because of what they see going on. And 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 we know, I mean, they even made, they even made uh, uh, Iran said, Hezbollah said, they have sleeper cells in the United States. And when they say the word, 
it's going to start here. So as people it's just are just tore up about all this going so so terrified. When you see these commotions, don't be terrified. You see nation against nation. That's a really powerful thing because that word nation is ethnos. We get the word ethnic. So ethnic group against ethnic group. What are the two main players in all of this? The ethnic group, Israel. Okay. So you got uh, you got uh, 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 Israel, and you got Iran, and you got Hezbollah, and you got Hamas, and so you got you got these ethnic groups that are against. They're all coming after Israel. So so. Nation against nation, and the Bainan says in Matthew 24, the, the Matthew version of this, all of these things are the beginning. I know you said, I can really get up with it. you know, but all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Meaning it's not going to get you better. Okay? You know, uh, uh, Tinkerbell's not going to come down and, and take her magic wand and do this, and it's all going to be gone. Because I've never seen this much aggression toward Israel worldwide as it is today. So it says it's beginning of sorrows, but it also says that the chart is filled with fear. And filled with fear, and it is my favorite part of all of this, it says. Lift up your head. Everybody's hanging their head now. What's going on? Lift up your head because your, your redemption draweth nigh. Lift up your head for your redemption. Draw a nine or rapture is getting ready to say. It's really so we're on the premises of the rapture doing, coming in any time. Jesus is ready to come back. So let's do some yes and no things, all right? Uh, yes, these are trouble at the times. Yes, yes, yes. How many say they're not? Okay. Yes, these are trouble at the times. And no, there's still we can do about it. Really? So, because no one can't serve God, but yes, God is still in control. Amen? Yes. And yes, we can live in fear and terror of what's coming. Here's where you come in, boss. Or no, instead, I choose to trust God and live each day as His gift. Amen? I choose to live right now, here, right now. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. My wife takes me something the other last. That's why it was so, I mean, it was something hilarious. It got to be so powerful. And one of the she said to me in this text is, life is like a helicopter. And then it said next, I don't know how to operate the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say some profound thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so here's our here's our here's our third one times now. Now this is very important. I want you to I want you to think about this. We get ready. Get, get your get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. Turn to Psalm 118, verse 24. Psalm 118, verse 24. Everybody stand for the reading of God's Word. We're going to stand, we're going to read it, we're going to pray, and you'll have to back to me. Somebody said, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Ready? Verse 24. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all say that with me. Ready? This, this is, is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its power. We thank you for the anointing that's in it. But in the very words, Lord, the anointed power of the spoken word that's from the written word. I ask you right now, God, to let your Rama come alive in us today, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. And we know, God, that you got this. And we trust you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, look, the past is behind us. 
fear. Third Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. This is what we refute arguments and theories and reasons, and every proud and lofty thing that sets up itself against the true knowledge of God. We leave every thought and purpose to lay captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Lord and One. This is now you're dominated by surrounding situations based on unreal, exaggerated threat and fear. So we got real threats coming. But those threats have sent that now they have lit our phobias. And because it's been our phobias, wow. You know, I took it a long time when I was in the tomb. You know, if, if you all of a sudden say it's popping you and you're trying to get something in your head, it's trying to get you to believe something, watch this. I'm going to tell you the fastest way. Ready? Y'all ready for this? Do this. Watch. Stop! <laughs> That's powerful work. Stop! <laughs> and then, then it wants to go and go and go and go and go and stop. Let's go stop! I'll tell you some more later, but that's how I started. It stopped! Instead of, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. So, watch. Then there's anxiety. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 said, Don't worry about anything, it's dead, pray for everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now you're dominated by future situations based on perceived threats. And then here's the biggie, paranoia. Paranoia. Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10. The heart is hopeless and dark and deceitful or puzzled that no one can figure out. But I, God, I search the heart and examine the mind. It's dominated by current people's perceptions and based on personal insecurities. I choose instead to go by Isaiah 26 and 3. You will keep us in perfect peace, those who trust in you. So now, y'all take these and put these up somewhere. This is awesome. This is awesome stuff. It will help you get through some naughty rough days that are coming. You're not here by accident today. Well, my wife, I had no idea that David Jeremiah and Jason Franklin uh, were preaching, preaching the same thing. And so, I mean, God... I see God at work. He's trying to tell us something. So we need to live in today, not yesterday, and not in tomorrow, but live in today. So, you ready? Again, this is the name of the Lord. Have you lips rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day that the Lord's going to Y'all say out loud, today. Today. Oh, get out. Today. 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 I like you're pulling for your favorite team and then you're scoring a touchdown. Today! All right! Now, if Satan's trying to talk to you and trying to get in your mind, what are you going to say? No. Stop! Well, get, get with it. Stop! Stop. Stop. One more time. Stop! Stop. Now, 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 be careful when you do it around somebody. They don't know what's coming to the spirit of death. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, 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 I went to someone with us and they did that, and then we drive down the road, and, and the first time I was going to <laughs> No. <laughs> it's not just another day. God's got his fingerprints all over this day. Just what my wife thought it and said, you see God has his fingerprints all over. No, it's not got his fingerprints all over it. God's got his fingerprints all over you. It is amazing what he has done. So don't let you put, you even determine your attitude today or somebody else will. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You either determine it now, or someone else can determine it for you. So, you have a choice to make, and the choice has to be clear. You know what? Look, look here's what I tell people when they find themselves with anxious thoughts. I want to, again, this, I, I have a plan on this, but we need to do this. This one guy, look, here it is. If your mind, all you hear in your mind is shoot it to the wood, shoot it to the wood, you're dwelling in the past. If it's what if, what if, what if, you're going to the future. I cannot change the past I'm going to learn from it. I cannot affect the future if I cannot get myself ready today. Besides, tomorrow may never come. Today is all we got. The time God promised you was the time that would take you right now to pick your foot up and put it in your coffin. That's how much time God promised us life is a vapor. This is the day that the Lord has made. And so when you find yourself being 
consumed by all this with Israel, all this with, with Russia and China and, and Iran and all this stuff going on now. There are all these warships from the United States over there, and they are actively engaged, or they have not actively gone over and, and stepped on the shore, but they are actively engaged in helping knock down the stuff that's being sent in there in the air. Watch this. Do this. I want y'all to repeat after me. Don't repeat this out to me. When your, anxious, when your anxious thoughts are consuming you, after you say stop, here's what we say. Close up, that's just the beginning. Stop! 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 Now say this. Stop. I am here. I am here. here. God is with me. God is with me. And I'm safe. And I'm safe. One more time. I am here. I am here. God is with me. I am not safe. It was not looking over here to the water, yes, and not looking back over here and should have been with us. And then she just breathe in through your nose or breathe out through your mouth and watch. And just say, watch this, my goodness, stop breathing in God's peace. I'm getting rid of this thoughts. And watch what I'm going to do. Okay, so now let's move a little bit further. We, we're trying to get through this. The one good thing about it, the day we ain't got to beat the baddest to the dogs. <laughs> We got to cross the street, get right over there, so we ain't got to beat anybody, so now we got this. So, here it is. Lamentations 3, 22 and 24, the message. God's long love couldn't have run out. His merciful love couldn't have dried up. They created, they're created new every morning. How great your faithfulness. I'm sticking with God. I say it over and over. He's all I've got. Wow. That's powerful. So, God only gives you today, not tomorrow. And so, so, when you look at these things, watch this. The manna itself, the manna was for one day. One day. If you store that manna, and you've been collecting more manna than you were supposed to in the wilderness, then if they went and opened up the pot to get the manna that they got over what they needed, it would be rotted, might even have worms in it. But daily, it was nice and it was fresh. What was God trying to tell those people in the wilderness when things were out of their control? Focus on the day at hand. Right now, don't focus. Look, you cannot focus in the Middle East. We're not there. You cannot focus in Russia and China. We're not there. You cannot focus in Iran or Israel. We're not there. We are here in the great big metropolis of Edwards, North Carolina. Amen. Amen. I didn't think it was mentioned on the Weather Channel one time. I think it was. I mean, it's high, high class. So why? Why? You cannot focus on tomorrow or yesterday. So watch this. You can't get distracted with the favors of yesterday. You're getting pressed. You can't get distracted with the words of tomorrow. You'll be full of anxiety. Matthew 6, 3, 34 says in the message, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Wow. Very, very, very powerful. So God made this day. And he gave it especially for you. Living. Living. Wow, that's a very powerful thought. You see, living this day, don't face this 24 hours, focus on tomorrow's 24 hours. Because you may not even be here tomorrow. Or tomorrow may not even be here. So you don't worry about tomorrow. Oh, you gotta think about things. Sure, you gotta keep your mind on some things too. Don't get crazy and think, oh, I never worry about anything else. No. Don't worry about anything, but I'd be concerned about all this stuff. I need to be concerned about right now, right here, here. Okay? So now, now, God always has a plan. And God always has a purpose. Y'all say that. God always has a plan. And God always has a purpose. Now, so, get ready to close. I say get ready. Mm -hmm. Jose 28, New Little Translation. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Everything in each day is designed for you, which includes, what's this? The ups. The downs, the joys, the sorrows. All of that. God takes them to account. He makes all these things work together. 
They all work together. We can't always have sugar plums every day. Well, in fact, if all you ever get sunshine, you know what you want to have yourself surrounded with? If all you ever get sunshine, you get surrounded by the desert. You've got to have some wind. You've got to have some ups. You've got to have some downs. You've got to have some salt. It makes you a complete person. When the path is smooth, when the path is deep, when the path is way beyond, God has promised us that he is involved in every aspect of that path. Sing this out now. He's already there. 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 <clears throat> so I see this. Here we go. I'm going to put some stuff. Well, first Peter 4, 12, well, let not think that strange concerning the prior trial which is the tried you. As though some strange thing has happened to you. Peter tried to get running where the Christians are being crucified. Now they're being crucified. They lie in the streets crucified. And then they're drenched in oil and set on fire. They became the street lights of Rome. He's right with these people. He's right just people are facing things like that and looking at the lions. You know, we think, we serve God, it doesn't to happen to us. You know, you know oh, we serve God, everything's going to be a hunky door. No, it's not! Well, we got somebody going to do it with us. Everything is made designed for us. So watch this. Let's do this. First, there's the ups. Psalm 34 and 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The downs. Psalm 42. He lifted me up out of a slimy pit. The joys. Now, the joy of the Lord is your strength, Nehemiah 8 and 10. The sorrows, Psalm 43 and 5, why cast down? Why be cast down? Put your hope in God. When the path is smooth, when the path is beaten, when the path is beyond, the Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. He shall direct your paths. Now, where past means to straighten out, real path, straighten out so you can go down. Malachi, I love this. I love this. When you're going through a trial, what should think about something? The Bible says in Malachi 3 and 3, well, of course, when the Israel was under attack, <coughs> he said, He shall send us a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, <coughs> and virgin is gold and silver, that he may offer it to the Lord and offer it in righteousness. God, so you all going to tell this to you have. I'll be real quick about it. Because he will send us a refiner by the fire. You understand what that means. When a refiner is set by the fire with silver and gold, he takes the fire and he, he stokes it up. He's, he's got a bellows under his foot. And he's got a, a metal tub or cast iron tub. And he, and he puts the metal in it. And he fires it up and he fires it up and he fires it up until the metal starts boiling. And when the metal starts boiling, coming together and boiling, then he watches, and it starts boiling up. Then he lets off the gas, and lets it cool down a little bit. When it really cools down, somebody takes a ladle, and it takes all that junk and goo that bubbled up, and takes it, and he throws it to the side. Then he starts up the fire again. As he starts up the fire, he waits until the stuff starts boiling, the gold or silver, the precious metal. And as it's boiling, when it comes to a boiling point, it takes his foot off the throttle again. As it's cooling down, it takes the label and it takes off that, that, that nasty oh. stuff that's coming out, the impurities that's coming out. And do you know when he knows when to stop? Is when he can see his reflection in that. So if you're in a trial today, instead of fighting God, say, God, I want you, I want you to see your reflection in me. Whoa. Wow. There. Very, very powerful. And again, I told you to get rid of This is the day which the Lord of Faith, we will rejoice and be glad. Watch this. Here, here's what I'm going to challenge you. Expect something good to happen today. How many guys just want to say, well, here it is, it's Sunday. I'm going to go to church. I don't want to go make my wife happy or make my husband happy. I'm going to be there. You know, I remember the time they see him, he was a little bit, he was standing up, I said, sit down. He used to do this, I said, I said, sit down. I said, boy, do I have to across this thing? And so, he sat down. I said, now what you got to say? He said, dear, I'm sitting down, but in my heart, I'm still standing up. <laughs> you 
You would be here today and you say, well, something good going to happen inside of you. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because no, it's not. I'm here. God is with me. And I'm saved. So, experience something good to happen today. I'm going to make it even, make it even more powerful. God make something good happen today. <laughs> you can make it happen. Don't just wait for it to happen. You can make it happen. He said, I will. this is the day the Lord has for me, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. That word rejoice means to spin around under the influence. I love the business. You've been so happy that you got an eager. How about this man since you got so powerful in the Lord, you just, you just said, man, this is so awesome. You just kind of ride on the breeze and said, man, this is so awesome. This is a true day, and I'm not going to anything take it away from you. Be glad. It means to cheer up. It means to change your attitude. Be glad. Get busy. Do something. Grand pull up or we're getting ready. We're getting ready to show the end of this thing. Everything we see and going on now, the signs is coming by. I'm going to use you a challenge for this week, and I want you to do this this week. We're going to pray. Here's the challenge. <clears throat> I mean, understand that you were born. It's not a mistake that you're here. It's not a mistake that you were born and you're alive in 2023. It's not a mistake. God, they go, oops, I slipped on him. I slipped on her. It's not a mistake. You were born. What's most of the time is this. You have been called. Take the stuff that you learn and go out and make a difference. Take stuff you learn other ways. Good stuff, go out and make a difference. So here's this week's challenge. Ready? Number one, be the good that you expect to see. Wow. You want, you want your marriage to get better? Be the spouse that you want your spouse to be. You want your friendship to get better? Be the friend that you want your friend to be. You want your church to get more powerful? Then. You be more powerful as what you want to see. So look, but be the good as you expect to see that the world needs to see and that God designed you to be. <laughs> I mean, realize this. God created you on purpose for a purpose. Amen. You know, the most creative time of a person their entire life is between birth and five years old. After five, your creativity is staunched and is held back. But up until five years old, that's the greatest time in a person's life in creativity. You know what happens at five years old? Kindergarten. They go to school. When they go to school, they talk to you about that children and play this line. Creativity is stopped. It is stopped. I remember one time in art class in eighth grade, or ninth grade, I think it was ninth grade, we were making these, we put this, the, the, this plaster in shoeboxes. And we got this, it to come out and it was hard. We were supposed to make, we were supposed to make statues. They didn't use the grinder and used to use the file maker. So I made this great big face that like to come up again in his eyes. And he said, I put it on a piece of wood. And so I built the wood and I had the science teacher. I'm holding, I am holding my statue in my hand. I said, What did they do with it? And she said, Varnish it. That's okay. So I varnished it. Lay out food. Everybody else was white. The whole class mine was going to my own brain. And my friends up there started laughing at me and said, What are you there for? I said, She told me. Did she come to say, Oh, no, 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 David. I didn't mean for you to varnish the statue. I want you to varnish the wood that's holding it. She said, Because you know what? And everybody was laughing at me. And she said, that's the most creative statue in this world. 
And then she told me, she said, look, if it's okay with you, I want to put that in the showcase at Washington High School. And this day there until I graduated. Wow. And people kept trying to buy it. How many saw this morning's body army? This morning's body army. Very, very powerful, if you think about it. Mighty army. Many times the wrong train didn't to the right place. We make our plans, but God's going to have his purpose. So you were created on purpose, for a purpose. Listen, you had a purpose before anybody else had an opinion. Ouch. Listen, mm. ouch, you are hallelujah, one or the other. You had a purpose before anybody had an opinion about you. God's got you. Yes, things are true to tell. We can't really leave this place. But we just can't sit on the side and run with Christ to come and take us up in the skies. Because it's still my look. This is the beginning. This is when he says, lift up your head because it's drawing near. It's like, this, this is happening. So the day is about waiting for you. I want you to receive these things happening. Get ready. Because <coughs> I am coming very soon. So, my question. Are you going to follow that challenge for you to do what you expect to do? Pray, pray, and play something. The world needs to see. God designed you to be. Everybody stand up. Everybody close your eyes. Bow your head. Go out of the room. <coughs> God is so awesome. There's nobody, nobody that can do effectively and as good as what you were designed to do. There's the body of Christ, there's the hands, there's the feet, there's the legs, there's the head, there's the mouth, there's the ears. right now, on the preface of the greatest event in history, the rapture, is trying to get us to pull the brakes when we should be hitting the accelerator. God's got this. God's got it. How many people here today would say, 
Pastor, I'm not where I should be in life. Either I've never been there, or I was there and I backed up, or I'm getting back up and I'm not sure where I'm at with him, but I'm not where I think I should be with God. Nobody looking around there to get back. Put your hand up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make an example out of you. Bless him, Lord, bless him. Bless him, bless him. How many here would be bold and say, you know what, I've been hitting the brake because I'm really confused and I'm scared about what's going on overseas. And I'm not sure what's going on or what's going down. And I can't even live my life because of all this stuff. And I'm talking to you right now. Nobody looking around, every head bowed, every, every eye closed. And put that hand up and say, I just stay so messed up with all things going around. Bless them, Lord, bless them. Well, maybe you're here today, and even apart from the stuff going on overseas, you find yourself that you've been hitting the brake, hitting the brake, hitting the brake, when you should have been hitting the accelerator. And you've really forgot to do something, because this is the last day. Not the last days, this is the last hours, this is the last moments. And you want to be working for him when he comes. Just say, look, once you raise your hands, I'm ready to take my foot off the brake and put it on the accelerator. Raise those hands. Bless the Lord, bless him. Let's pray together. Father, I commit my life and my heart to you. You are the most awesome, most powerful God. Your grace and your mercy spans the universe. Lord, help me to be with you. To take my foot off the brake and put it on the accelerator. And I thank you, God. And I thank you. God. There's something good. There's something good. It's going to happen to me today. Through me today. Through me. For me today. For me. In the name of Jesus Christ. The church said? Amen. Yeah. 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 Now, that's what we're going to do. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. After saying the Lord's Prayer, uh, we're going to ask for the meeting. Not only does this is unfair, but say blessing. There's nothing worse than going over to homecoming and you got your plates all filled, you're sitting there, and it gets cold away away from some long winded preacher to come along and say blessing. <laughs> so, we're going to go ahead and say the blessing now. So, you can go over there and feel free to go ahead and start eating. Okay, and it'll be fine. So, we'll say one prayer, and then, Brother Benny, you dismiss us, and you say the prayer of the food. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our prayer forever. Heavenly Father, we ask that you take fear out of our heart, and put in your strength, your wisdom, your courage, for us to face everything that comes through, day by day, week by week. For we know with you in charge, we will come out the other side, the victor. And Lord, as we go across the street, we ask that this food will nourish our body as your word nourishes our soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.